All right, the next discrete time signal operation that we're going to take a look at is addition. So in this video, we'll look at the operation where we add two signals, which will denote x1 and x2, to create a new signal y of k. And you can see what's going on here. Basically, at each time k, we are creating the new signal y at that time by summing up x1 at that time plus x2 at that time. So it's very similar to what we do in multiplication and some of these other operations. Everything happens on a per time basis. So let's take a look at an example, signal addition. So as I said, we're going to create this signal by adding up x1 and x2. Let's go ahead and say that x1 is this discrete time signal right here. One thing when we draw signals like this is we often assume that outside of the interval drawn, the signal is zero. So that's a very kind of common thing. If I draw all these values right here and then don't specify otherwise, it's somewhat common to assume that it's zero outside of that interval, even if it's not explicitly stated. Here is x2, the other signal that we'll be adding to x1. It looks like this. And then over here on the left, what we'll do is actually plot the new signal y of k as we get each point. So let's just start at the most negative time that we have a non-zero value, that's time minus 5. So here at time minus 5, x1 has a value of 0, and x2 has a value of 2. So 0 plus 2 gives us a value of 2 at time minus k, at time uh, minus 5 for y. So that's why we plot a 2 right there. And now we go to the next value of time. So at time minus 4, this signal is equal to 2. This signal is equal to 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So we plot a 3 right here for y at time 3. And then we just keep going along. Minus 2 plus 0 is minus 2. At time minus 2, we had 1 plus 1 to give us 2. So we plot that and then just keep going. So right now I'm just drawing the actual dots. When I'm all done kind of filling in the dots, here at time 3 we had a negative 2 plus a negative 1 to give us a negative 3. After I'm done doing all of the dots, I'll go back in and fill in the actual stems. So having added signal x1 and x2, I end up with this signal y of k. That's one way to do it if you want to think kind of graphically. Another way that's kind of nice to deal with discrete time signals is since they're just a list of numbers, if you don't want to worry about plotting them and all you need to know is the signal in terms of its values, sometimes just making a table like this is easy. So you can see what I've done here. I've just taken time and written down all of the times of interest from time k equals negative 5 all the way up to k equal 4. And then I'm just going to go ahead and write down the values of my signals. So x1 had these values if you go look at the plot. x2 had these values as a function of time if you go look at the plot for x2. And then creating y of k is very easy because all I have to do is add these two numbers. So 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, etc. And you just kind of go down the list to get your signal y of k. So this is another uh, way to do signal addition and actually lots of signal operations. Just make a little table like this, get the values that you need, and then maybe go plot this list if you actually need to make the plot. One thing that I'll note here, and sometimes students get confused on this, is just because it's easy to deal with integers, I often plot signals that have integer values. But these values of the discrete time signal don't have to be integers. Discrete time has to be an integer. That's why it's a discrete time signal. But the values of the signals themselves don't have to be integers. So I could just have easily have created a signal here that instead of 2 was 2.4 or 2.47956, right? So just because it's easy to draw integers and add integers, I often use integers in these examples but the actual amplitudes themselves can often take on values that are, you know, completely real value, can be anything, or they might be discretized, but they're discretized at a much finer level than um, integers. So anyway, that's it for now. This was our video on signal addition. In the next video, we'll take a look at multiplying discrete time signals.